Greetings everybody, welcome back to Weekly Wildlife Wisdom. So far I've been your host Zero Yeti and this is our 100th episode. Uh, we're getting to the triple digits. I've been doing this show for around four years and while well, I still plan on making a few more episodes, I uh, feel like we're kind of kind of nearing the end. Um, but I'm still, as I said, I still plan on covering way more species. And if you guys have any requests for animals I haven't covered, uh, go ahead and put them in the comments. I'll probably get to them. Uh, but without further ado, let's get into it. The first animal leak being uh, Orthinorhynchus anatinus, better known as the duck-billed platypus, or simply the platypus. It is a species of semi-aquatic mammal endemic to eastern mainland Australia, as well as the islands of Tasmania and Kangaroo Island. Together with the four species of echidna, they make up the monotremes, which are mammals that lay eggs instead of giving birth to live young. These generally solitary, nocturnal, and crepuscular animals inhabit a variety of streams, rivers, wet and wetlands. Excuse me. Spending their days inside of short, straight burrows with entrances that are often hidden by vines or roots. Come nightfall, the platypus will emerge and then submerge, spending much of its time in the water foraging for food in the form of worms, insect larvae, freshwater shrimp, crabs, and crayfish, uh, which they either dig out of the riverbed with their snout or catch while swimming. Platypi are themselves preyed upon by crocodiles, snakes, water rats, goannas, hawks, owls, eagles, and red foxes. Reaching around 15 to 24 inches or 38 to 61 centimeters in length and around 1.4 to 5.5 pounds or 0.64 to 2.5 kilograms in weight, with males typically being larger than females, the platypi are infamous for sporting a thick coat of brown fur, wide webbed and clawed feet, a broad flat tail, and a characteristic flat bill which is packed with electroreceptors. Additionally, they sport spurs on their rear feet, which in males contains a venom potent enough to kill smaller animals, such as house cats. The breeding season occurs from June to October. During such time, males form strict territories, which they frequently patrol to find mates and ward off rivals. After mating, a female constructs a deep, elaborate nesting burrow up to nearly 20 meters or 65 feet long, lined with leaves, reeds, and grasses. Here she will lay one to three leathery eggs, which she will incubate for around 10 days until they hatch. The young remain in their burrow for up to four months, nursing from their mother. Females do not have nipples and instead secrete milk from their skin. Uh, platypus grow extensively after hatching, and by four months of age, they have developed a thick, waterproof fur and are practically independent. Under ideal conditions, the platypus will research mature around two years of age and will up to 17. Next up, we have Tana japonensis, uh, better known as the evening cicada. The kanakana, or the higurashi, is a species of cicada insect in the genus Tana, which can be found throughout Eastern Asia, but in particularly abundant in Taiwan and the islands of Japan. Here they inhabit plains, meadows, mountain, and mountainous regions, and in particular, cypress, cedar, and hardwood forests. Both adults and larvae feed upon tree sap and other plant liquids. Adult females reach around 0.8 to 1 inch, or 21 to 25 millimeters in length, while males reach around 1.1 to 1.5 inches, or 28 to 20, 38 millimeters in length. Uh, and they do typically sport a longer and thicker abdomen than the females. In addition, the intra-abdominal cavity of the male is more developed, giving it a more resonant call. Sorry. The body is a colored reddish-brown with green around the compound eye in the center and the back of the thorax. The mountain-dwelling specimens tend to be darker in coloration, almost a brownish color. In addition uh, to the two prominent compound eyes, they have three small eyes and on the forehead and two pairs of large wings. T. japonensis does not undergo complete metamorphosis, uh, and their young hatch directly from the eggs and then spend most of their lives growing in a series of molts underground, feeding on the plants the roots of plants. 
Nymphs have strong front legs for digging, and when they emerge, they indice for the final time, producing wings and becoming fully grown, ready to mate typically in late summer and all throughout autumn. The evening skater may live up to 13 years, however, uh, they spend almost all but one season underground and thus only spend their final season as an adult. The secretary bird or uh, is a species of large, mostly terrestrial bird in the, of prey, which is endemic to sub-Saharan Africa. The secretary bird prefers to inhabit open grasslands, savannas, and shrublands, and highlands rather than rainforest swamps and woodlands. In these habitats, secretary birds form monogamous pairs and defend a large territory around 19 square miles or 50 square kilometers. And while capable of flight, secretary birds, excuse me, are primarily terrestrial animals. Hunting in pairs or with their offspring, they stalk throughout their habitat with long, careful strides in search of prey, such as large invertebrates, lizards, amphibians, small turtles, and tortoises, hares, hedgehogs, rodents, polecats, small felines, young gazelle, mongoose, and birds up to the size of guinea fowl, but in but especially snakes. They love to kill and eat snakes. I'm sorry, I keep mumbling over myself and having a bit of indigestion. Apologies. Once found, a secretary bird will chase after prey with wings spread to, uh, with wings spread and kill by striking with swift blows of the feet. Uh, they stand roughly around 4 foot 3 inches or 1.3 meters tall and around Three foot seven to four foot eleven, or uh, excuse me, inches from front to back, uh, with a six point three to eleven to sorry, with a six foot three inch to six foot eleven inch, or one point nine to two point one meter wingspan. Secretary Bird is a large, instantly recognizable bird with an eagle-like body and a crane-like uh, legs and a featherless, featherless red-orange face and predominantly gray plumage with a flattened dark crest and black flight feathers on and thighs. Breeding may occur year-round and during courtship they exhibit a nuptial display by soaring high with undulating flight patterns and calling with guttural croaking. Males and females can also perform a ground display by chasing each other with their wings up and back. Both sexes build a relatively flat 3 to 5 foot or 1, 1 to 1.5 meter wide platform nest out of sticks and grasses atop a dense thorny tree some 8 to 40 feet or 2.5 to 13 meters off the ground. Here they lay one to three chalky bluish whitish eggs, uh, and, which are incubated for around 45 days until hatching. Excuse me, I am not feeling too well. The young remain with their parents until they become independent some four to seven months of age. Under ideal conditions, the secretary bird may live upwards of 15 years. Gymnothorax fum bris, better known as the green moray or the green moray eel, Less commonly as the green congo, the green conger, the green eel, or the olive green moray, is a species of eel in the family Moranidae, which is native to the waters of, west, of the western Atlantic Ocean from as far north as Long Island, New York, to as far south as Brazil, and as far east as Bermuda to as far west as the Gulf of Mexico. These generally solitary animals tend to inhabit rocky coastal outcrops, shorelines, mangroves, and seagrass beds and coral reefs at, a, at depths of up to 130 feet or 40 meters where they spend their days amongst the cracks and crevices emerging at night to hunt prey such as fishes, crabs, shrimp, octopuses, and squid. Uh, they are themselves preyed upon by larger sharks. Reaching upwards of 8 feet or 2.5 meters in length and 65 pounds or 30 kilograms in weight, the green moray ranks amongst the largest of true eels. Like other true eels, the moray's dorsal fin begins just behind the head and extends along the legs of its body and is fused to the caudal and anal fins. The moray eel also lacks both pelvic and pectoral fins. 
Uh, the Moray's muscular scalose body is actually an olive green in color with a yellow tint of mucus that covers the body in combination with a drab background color. This gives the fish its namesake green coloration. Although little is known regarding the green moray eel spawning, like other true eels, they are oviparous and begin lives as larvae that hatch from very small eggs. The ribbon-shaped larvae, called leptocephali, or leptocephali, drift among the water column where they feed and float until they are ready to enter their next life stage, which is usually around eight months of age. Once they enter the juvenile stage, they settle into the new habitat and where they feed and grow into adult eels that can live upwards of 30 years. Next up is Salvatar Rufens, Rufens or Ruf, yeah, Rufsons. Uh, better known as the red tegu is a species of large lizard native to Argentina, Bolivia, and Paraguay, where they tend to inhabit scrublands, semi-deserts, savanna, and dry deserts and not dry deserts, dry forests. These diurnal lizards are powerful diggers that excavate deep tunnel-like burrows which they utilize for trolls the deep general shelter, nesting, and as hibernation sites. During the coldest periods of the year, these tegus brumate in some areas for up to seven months at a time. Tegu lizards are opportunistic omnivores which feed upon a variety of fruits, vegetables, leaves, insects, snails, slugs, crustaceans, rodents, birds, smaller reptiles, fish, eggs, and carrion. There is a considerable amount of sexual dimorphism in the species which females reach around 3 foot or 91 centimeters in length, while males can reach upwards of 4.5 feet or 140 centimeters in length. Additionally, males notably sport distinct prominent fatty jowls. Both sexes sport a reddish-brown coloration with green to black stripes across their width and several broken white stripes down their length. Breeding may occur up to twice a year during the warm season with a female red tegu laying around 18 to 25 eggs inside her burrow, which she then covers with dry grass, small branches, and leaves in order to maintain optimal temperatures and humidity levels. After a 40 to 75 day incubation period, the eggs hatch. Red tegu hatchlings show little red coloration, but gradually grow more colorful as they age. Uh, after growing rapidly, the red tegu re typically reaches sexual maturity around 2-3 years. Under no conditions, a red tegu may live upwards of 20. Next up, we have uh, Neophysidae asia orientalis, better known as the Jangtung or the Yangtze finless porpoise. Is a species of tooth whale in the porpoise family Physonidae, which is endemic to the Yangtze River of China. They are one of the world's only freshwater porpoises and tend to be found in shallow bay areas, swamps, lakes, and estuaries where they feed upon various species of fish and crustaceans. Like most cetaceans, they are a highly social species which lives in pods as little as 3 to as many as 20 individuals. Rather than vocalizing via chirps and whistles like most dolphin species do, these porpoises use echolocation and ultrasonic pulses to communicate with one another. They are also known to sleep in shift-like cycles with active porpoises occasionally supporting their lethargic compatriots on their backs. This is particularly common with parents and their offspring. Reaching some 5 to 7.5 feet or 1.5 to 2.3 meters in length, and around 100 to 160 pounds or 45 to 72 kilograms in weight, uh, male porpoises tend to be generally larger than females, uh, but in, as a whole, the Yangtze finless porpoise is one of the smaller cetaceans. They sport large curved flippers with pointed tips, stocky gray to black body that slims towards the tail, and a unique, very steeped head lacking a beak. Instead of a dorsal fin, these porpoises have a dorsal ridge or, or groove that is covered in a variety of rows of tubercles. Breeding occurs in late spring and early summer, and after a 10-11 to 11 month pregnancy, a mother yangs you finless porpoise will give birth to a single offspring called a calf. Under ideal conditions, the yangs finless porpoise may live up to 30 years. And our extinct animal of the week is Torosaurus, which is a genus of herbivorous chasmosaurian ceratopsian dinosaur that lived throughout much of western North America, from as far north as Saskatchewan to as far south as Texas. 
uh, during the late Mesertian age of the late Cretaceous period, some 69 to 66 million years ago. The first remains of Taurosaurus, consisting of a pair of skulls, were unearthed in 1891 by John Bill Hatcher in Neoborana County in southwestern Wyoming, or southeastern Wyoming. Excuse me. Hatcher then presented his finds to his boss, Othniel Charles Marsh, who described in the animal as Taurosaurus. The name Taurosaurus is frequently translated to as bull lizard from the Latin noun tauros and the Spanish word toro, but is much more likely derived from the Greek verb torio, which means to perforate, an allusion to the fenestra or window-like holes in the elongated frill, which have traditionally served to distinguish the sol- it from the solid frill of its contemporary triceratops. Since these first remains, several additional individuals consisting of mostly complete skeletons have been recovered, representing two species, T. latus and T. utahensis, reaching some 24 to 30 feet or 7.9 to 9.1 meters in length and 13,200 to 26,400 pounds or 6,000 to 12,000 kilograms in weight, Taurosaurus was one of the biggest ceratopsians to ever exist. It is most famous for its massive skull with elongated frill, which reached some 7.9 to 9.8 feet, or, four, or 2.4 to 3 meters in length, meaning that Taurosaurus sported the largest skull no, of any known land animal. In life, Taurosaurus would have traveled throughout North America in complex herds, feeding upon low-growing vegetation, as they, that, that, which they chomped, using their beak and battery of teeth. As always, take care of my guys, guys, and non-binary pals. Hope you have a wonderful day.